Today, we're going to be looking at the new ChatGPT desktop app that just came out a couple of days ago. It's available for Mac. It's not available for Windows users, but I'm going to walk you through step by step what it is, how it works. And even if you've not got access to it yet, you can still check out how I'm using it and some of the best use cases, which I think is very interesting indeed, especially if you're into SEO and you want to rank high. Bear in mind, I've done nearly 500 videos about AI. I've run thousands of tests with AI and SEO. And so based on that today, we're going to be testing out the desktop app, looking at the best ways to use it, showing you exactly how you can use it, why it's different versus just using the ChatGPT website and some of the best use cases. Let's get into it. By the way, if you want all of this personalized to your website, feel free to check out the SEO boardroom links in the comments and description. Now, I was pretty skeptical about ChatGPT and I was like, why is it different with the desktop app when you just use a web app? And laptops these days, they're pretty much Chrome machines, right? One of the best things you can do with this from what I've seen is you can actually leave ChatGPT open in the background and then you can actually plug into ChatGPT anytime using option and space, right? So let's say I'm on my website and I'm trying to optimize a page that I already have. What I could do is press option and space, type something, for example, like give me 10 SEO optimized headlines for my page targeting the keyword best SEO agencies. And we can switch between it and access it really quickly, right? So for example, let's say I'm editing a post. I can take that, plug it into my blog. We're ready to go there. Other things you can do is you can press option of space and you can upload a file, upload a photo, take a screenshot or take a photo. Right? So for example, if we go to take screenshot right here, go to Google Chrome, you have to allow permissions. I'll just set that up right now. And then we'll go again. So we've taken the screenshot right here and then I'll say, give me five SEO optimized headlines for this page. And if we pull chat GPT up over here, you can see there's actually taken the screenshot from that particular page, giving me five different headlines that I could use inside the content. And you can even switch between GPT-4 and GPT-4.0. As you can see, you can ask it to read out the content, for example, like this. Sure, here are five SEO optimized headlines for your page. One, boost your website rankings with Julian Goldie's proven SEO strategies. Two, get expert SEO advice. That's enough for that. But there's definitely some benefits that you wouldn't normally have. Now, this to me is kind of like a better version or an easier version of say something like Harper, right? Or voila. So these GPT assistants, which are really good and you can install inside Chrome, you can just access instantly by pressing option space. Now, I'm not saying this is the best thing since sliced bread, but the other thing that I would say here is that, for example, if you're using ChatGPT, then it's going to be stored in your history, right? Whereas if, for example, you're using a Chrome extension, that's not going to be stored inside your ChatGPT. You won't be able to access it. And this is obviously synced with the website as well. So if we go into chatgpt.com, you can see the history right there. What we can also do is we can, you know, let's say you're using your favorite SEO tool. You're trying to find some easy keywords, etc. You've got a bunch of keywords on the page right here. What you can do is open up chat GPT again. We'll take a screenshot. We'll say which keywords are the best for me. And now what we can do, right, is let's say you've got your keywords up from Ahrefs right here on the screen. It's got details of the keyword, the keyword difficulty, etc. It'd be annoying to like download it, export it, import it, blah, blah, blah. We can just take a screenshot, which is a faster workflow. Then we'll say, based on who I am, and I'll show you why this is important in a second, find the best keywords for me. It's going to analyze them. And it says, here are some of the best keywords from the image that could be beneficial for your link building agency. Now, bear in mind, if you go into ChatGPT and we go into my settings, I've talked about this in other videos, but if you haven't done it already, I would recommend doing it now, especially if you've got the desktop app. But essentially what you can do is you can go to the personalization section right here and it's got the memory of who you are. And inside your settings, inside the customized chat GPT settings, you can add some information about you, right? So for example, what would you like chat GPT to know about you to provide better responses? Then I said, I'm a link builder. My name is Julian Goldie. I have a link building agency, etc. Here's some information about me. You can literally just copy and paste your about me page if you want. And then from there, when you're doing your keyword research, you can get ChatGPT to pick out the best ones for you, right? You can get ChatGPT to customize the recommendations based on you. And then you can say, okay, which keyword should I start with first? 
and we can prioritize it as well. And they said best SEO software for agencies, here's why. Targets agencies which are likely your primary audience. Pretty crazy right there. Now, if we go back to the settings, there's an option to keep ChatGPT on top. Now, it might be obvious to some people, but if you want as well, you can just resize your window like that and then have ChatGPT ready to go on the side. So you've got them pulled up whilst you're doing your work. Now, what we could also do is we could take our sitemap like so, take a screenshot of Chrome. I'm going to grab the SAP from the video yesterday. You can see in the video there. Then I'm going to take this, plug it into ChatGPT and say, based on my competitor, create a topple map. Niche equals bird, niche equals birds, a language equals English. And then we'll say, see the screenshot. And then you can see what it's done is said, right, based on the extracted URLs, here's topple map for the niche. Types, bird care, feeding, behavior traits, etc. Just a heads up as well, the system requirements for using the ChatGPT app a Mac OS 14 and the M1 chip or better. Now, from what I've read, GPT 4.0's new conversation capabilities aren't inside there yet. But you can have a cheeky conversation and say, right, give me a list of keywords and a topical map for SEO in the bird's niche. And then it will translate the text for you and you can just submit that as a prompt. You can also chat with voice. So you can choose a voice right here. Hey, I'm ready to hit the ground running. Hey there, I've got a really great feeling about us teaming up. Hi there, I just want to share how thrilled I am to work with you and I can't wait to get started. So what's the game plan? You got multiple different voices you can use as you can see. Hey, it's great to meet you. How's your day going? Hey, I'm ready to hit the ground running. So if there's anything you'd like me to focus on first, just let me know. Let's go with Ember and let's see if it actually works. No, connection failed, as you can see. I'm going to go back and we're going to try that with GPT-4 instead. So you can see it's still kind of in beta, like it's connecting right there. It's not really working, but I think that's useful for you to know anyway, either way. Let's try something else. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to say, based on the video screenshot, give me five different social media post ideas, plus one poll I can ask, one two-step reply, social media post plus one email teaser. That's going to be very rough. I don't expect that all to work, but let's have a go and see what it comes up with. Now you could definitely improve the quality of the prop just to get less fluffy answers. But what you can see right here is it's come up with the social media post ideas, poll question ideas, two set replies and email teasers as well. The other thing I wonder as well is like whether from a user's perspective, they're going to use Google or people would just use ChatGPT instead. Bear in mind that ChatGPT 4.0 is going to be free and released to the public and they're trying to get mass adoption right here. So for example, let's say you're on Google and you're like, right, what's the best guitar 2024? It's going to give you a bunch of ads right here. Then it's going to probably give you some affiliate articles, etc. It's a bit messy to get the answer straight away. If you press like option and space, type in best guitar 2024, it literally gives you the answers straight off the bat. Like which one's giving you the faster idea, which one is easier to use. I would personally say the, the chat GPT experience is better because there's no ads in there and you can trust the content, right? And it's not even linking to anyone, which means that the content is completely neutral. There's no affiliate links, for example. For me personally, I would say that is a better experience versus this, which is like super messy and, and a little bit confusing. Bear in mind, like the user is trying to get the answer straight off the bat. Something to think about there for sure. Now, if we click over here, we can access the custom GPTs that we've built as well. And we'll take a screenshot of the screen. And then with my custom GPT, I'll say, generate a relevant YouTube thumbnail image for this video. It doesn't actually use the custom GPT, which I thought it might do. That would probably be better. But you can see it's creating the image right there. And it's got the screenshot of my video, plus the details, etc. It's generated this image, which is not great. But I think if you tweak the prompt, it could be a lot better. Like for example, you wouldn't want any text in there. You want the dimensions to be landscape, etc. But it has potential. So thanks so much for watching. That is my breakdown on how you can use ChatGPT desktop app for SEO based on a few different ideas. It's definitely in early days right now, so I wouldn't say it's like perfect, but it has a lot of potential. Now, if you want to get access to the 200 AI and ChatGPT prompts, 
you can get access to that free inside my course and links inside the comments and description. And if you want to get all of this personalized to your business, if you want to learn how to get more leads, traffic and sales from SEO, feel free to book in a free SEO strategy session and you'll get a free SEO domination plan. You'll discover the secrets of link building or answer any questions you have. You'll learn the best link building strategies for your website and how to outrank your competitors with link building. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.